When I was a younger man, my dad couldn't understand. My foundations laid in bunker sand, my dreams bohemian. His rainbow was on the green, mine was in the rough it seemed. We got together in the seams, me and my old man. Poetry for me is a short, concise way to express deep emotions. And yesterday, the sun peeked through to see his rainbow had come in too. I write poetry about friends who I love and uh, the places that I work, and it gives me an emotional outlet for the many trips I take to the many places, and the world is full of subjects. Considered by many as a landscape poet, golf course architect Robert Trent Jones, Jr. combines his design work with poetry of the more traditional written kind. It has a formal side, it's a structural poetry like a sonnet, or it can be free verse. Golf architecture also has a structure. There's a beginning, a middle, and an end, and I think the two go together. And I have to keep in mind where the words rhyme in poetry, and I have to keep in mind the par threes and par fours and par fives in golf design. Jones Jr.'s latest creation is Palmarish Golf in the Western Algarve. The 27-hole layout is his team's first project in this part of Portugal. The Algarve itself is a famous golf destination, much like Pebble Beach is or St. Andrews is. So when I first came here, I said, well, I've got to play up here. We've got, a, we've got a lot of good golf courses in this region. And when I saw this land, I said, wow, once a decade, I might get a piece of land to work with like this. Located between the picturesque towns of Alvor and Lagos, Palmarish is a unique blend of not one, not two, but three contrasting golfing landscapes. If the ground is very t cut tight in the summertime and hard, you could putt it, you know? We call it a Texas wedge. Or you can hit a bump and run shot, British style shot, or you can hit an L wedge up in the air and down. So you have th three different styles of golf, a parkland style, um, and you have a created links kind of a heathland style and the links course, of the natural dunes land. Uh, it's very rare to have true links on them. The Scottish people might argue about this, but it's, it's a kind of a soft Scotland, you know, and a much warmer Scotland. We study the land at great length in order that the golf course will have a minimum impact upon it. In fact, Mother Nature is the best master and the best architect, so we follow her. Never fight with Mother Nature. The holes are laid out on the land and, not, and in the land, not on top of the land. We don't come with a preconceived idea of how the golf course should be structurally set up. And, and, and we follow the land and let the land evoke a response to us. Palmarish is just one of a whole host of breathtaking links in the Algarve. Some historic, some modern, but all perfectly in tune with their surroundings. A good golf course is designed and constructed much like a composer would write a symphony. It must be harmonious. It must have par threes that are charming, par fives that are reachable in two, par fours which are strict examinations, maybe a drivable par four, but all together it's one great walk through the land, much like it's one great piece of music. Of the hundreds of courses that Trent Jones Jr. has helped create, none have a higher profile than the 2010 course at Celtic Manor in Wales, home to the 2010 Ryder Cup. The original Wentwood Hills course we designed in the mid-90s, but in order to have a Ryder Cup, it was too hilly, it was maybe too Welsh. You had to dive down into your valley for the Usk River. The European tour wanted the course to be lower so the spectators and the players wouldn't have to walk up and down hills. And so we collaborated with the European tour itself and with Jeremy Slesser and uh, Ross McMurray, who are fine architects in their own right. In fact, Jeremy Slesser was trained by my dad. So it was like a team effort. Some reports stated otherwise, and there was criticism, describing Trent Jones's original layout as extensively remodeled. It's an opinion which is firmly rebuffed, and the American was keen to put the record straight. <laughs> no, they weren't extensively remodeled. Uh, Bob Harrington, who built the original 18, built the new nine as well, and they, t he worked uh, with the team that was there and in order to make them seem like they're a part of the same course. But in the end, uh, 
the original holes were not remodeled. They were tweaked a little bit, a bunker added here, deepened and so on. In fact, that's normal for a preparation and championship at the highest level of game. After all, we're just creating the great green stage upon which the play is played. The, the championship, the Ryder Cup itself, is about the players and the contest. We're simply stagehands. In a career spanning four decades, Robert Trent Jones Jr. has designed over 270 courses in six continents. Like his father, he's a true master of his trade. Well, more and more, I guess, uh, people call me an artist. If you're trying to explain to people what you're going to do, they have to believe your vision will come out right, especially when you're doing a golf course. You know, you see the land, it's even as glorious a piece of land as this, and yet they have to have faith that eventually the project that you envision will be something beautiful and it'll have an invitation to true golf art. The area of uh, poetry, it's similar. Uh, you try to express something that people feel is real and authentic. I'm not an abstract poet or a golf architect that makes strange shapes. I like to fit into nature into the natural way.